opening weekend comes to a close at Hutton Arena, the birthplace of intercollegiate basketball, Hanlon University in St. Paul. We wrap up the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off and opening weekend with a potential state tournament preview. The Chaska Hawks, one of the perennials in Section 2, take on the defending Section 7-4A champions, the Centennial Cougars, both teams playing the first game of the season. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mike Pete, and here I am all by myself talking to myself. That's chaos theory. Chaska going through some chaos of their own, but nothing due to team dynamics or chemistry. That's because two of their key pieces from last year are now college students in Mallory Heyer, who's having a terrific freshman year at Minnesota. Kendall Carmen, another one. But Chaska does have another hire in Aubrey. Ashley Schulke comes back, and their dynamic point guard, Kennedy Sanders, she can fit through the tightest of spaces. Kennedy Sanders going to Colorado next year. Anytime she touches the ball, she can make magic happen. Chasco will rely upon her, I imagine, in the early part of the season. But Terrace Hyper told me she expects this team to play a little faster than years past with the lineup they have. For Centennial, a crop of young guns led them to the state tournament after a rough start. Moving Marissa Frost to the point guard position helped steady the ship, and Centennial went on a tear. She comes back, Autumn McCall comes back, and the Cougars with that group. No big superstars, but the players get the job done. Centennial has a proud history when it comes to girls basketball. In fact, they made some noise many years ago at this event. You might recall the 2008 rendition of this Pat Patterson event when the Cougars upset the defending 4A state champion, St. Paul Central Minutemen. Macy Littlefield, KJ Tharp are a couple of other players who figured to get some more playing time this year. And the Cougars looking to build off of last year with Frost and McCall having a little more experience at their backs. Centennial figures to be the favorite in section seven. And we'll see how this state tournament run goes if they get there. We'll be back to tip things off. You're watching High School Girls Basketball. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. One more game as the starters are being introduced here at Hamlin University's Hutton Arena. The Chaska Hawks and the Centennial Cougars. The Pat Patterson tip-off. They were looking for another matchup after a couple of teams had to back out. Chaska and Centennial had an opening. And that set up what should be a fun nightcap. This is also a intra-squad meeting of sorts. There are a lot of Fury connections on both sides. Autumn McCall and Marissa Frost, both Fury teammates. They play on the same AAU team, if memory serves correctly. Kennedy Sanders, Aubrey Heyer, Anna Lenzen, longtime Fury associates. This is game one for both teams. So, no pregame analysis to draw from, but again, Centennial brings back plenty of experience in their ranks. Something tells me that could play in their favor. Let's recap the starters now that they've been introduced. For Centennial, it's Macy Littlefield, Marissa Frost, Emma Walsh, Autumn McCall, and K.J. Tharp. 
Chaska will start. Kennedy Sanders, Anna Lenzen, Kylie Silas, Ashley Schulke, and Aubrey Heyer. And one of Centennial's recent graduates working this event, that is Camille Cummings, who is playing Division III women's basketball right here at Hamlin University. Opening day for these two. It's a tough start to the season for Centennial and Chaska. The Cougars won't participate in the breakdown event, but they will get Lakeville North on Tuesday, and Chaska will play them in the tip-off classic next weekend. We're underway. Anna Lenzen took the feed from Sanders. Comes up empty there. Centennial on the run a little too strong. That was Emma Walsh. Chaska looking to floor it. And they'll get free throws. Ashley Schulke, one of the key returners to the line for two. Chaska, of course, in that brutal section two. Schulke will play at Concordia St. Paul next season. A versatile athletic guard, in the words of Tara Seifert. And she records her first point of the season. So a pair of free throws gets the Hawks on the board. Centennial looking to push. Emma Walsh. There's Frost McCall. She had a sensational second half of the season after some initial struggles in her freshman campaign. That played a big role in getting Centennial back to the state tournament. You may recall a couple of years ago, came within a point of beating Rosemount. Kennedy Sanders lines up the three off the heel. The Cougars came within a point of beating Rosemount in 2021 in the semifinals. It was Chaska who won it all in 2021, beating Rosemount and getting that humongous upset over Hopkins in the semis. So we came awfully close to a Chaska Centennial showdown in that 4A state tournament. And then Chaska was upset in the second round of sections last year. Autumn McCall kept it herself, went in for two. And it's possible these two could make state. Now Chaska in that brutal section two, you've got Minnetonka and Eden Prairie among the short list of contenders. You give Kennedy Sanders a first step, more often than not, she's gonna come up with the layup, and she does there. 4-2 in the early going. Lenzen, following the rebound, dishes out to Schulke. Corner three, no good. Macy Littlefield collects the rebound. McCall. Couldn't get her past Aubrey Heyer. Heyer bouncing it to Schulke for the transition score. And the Hawks off to a quick 6-2 start. McCall finds Frost, and the dual sport athlete draws the foul, will shoot two. Centennial was featured in this year's breakdown book. Making some fun about their location. Uh, not a lot of folks know where Centennial is. It's in Circle Pines for the curious. 
Frost has verbally committed to North Dakota State. Very confident in her offensive skills last season, and she set a school record for three-point field goal percentage, 47 and a half. Knocks down both free throws for the Cougars. Frost also a soccer athlete at Centennial. Has a state tournament appearance to her credit there. A couple of them to be precise. Including a silver medal back in 2021. Nicole used up the dribble. High lob and number 10, Katie Anderson couldn't keep it in play. Sanders. Jumper offline. McCall lost it. Sanders takes it. She has played a vital role on this Chaska team since eighth grade. And that's a traveling call. Slid on the floor there. One of those weird plays. Not much you can do there. 13-49 left in the first half. 6-4 the score. Frost brings it up. Nothing doing for Anderson. Chaska zipping down court again. And remember, this is a 94 feet court in terms of length. 10 feet longer than the high school dimensions. Josie Lakoski with the kiss off the glass. That gets her on the board. And Chaska up eight to four. Emma Walsh comes up short on the drive. Centennial intercepts the bounce pass. That's Frost. Cougars looking to finish on the run. Autumn McCall is there to flip it in. Sanders. Got caught in a tie-up. Centennial with the arrow. Both teams subbing early and often. 12.25 left in the first half. And opening weekend, the final game of opening weekend here at the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip-off. They moved the game up an hour as Orno and Minnehaha's match was postponed. Minnehaha in health and safety protocols. Three from the corner. Comes up short, Kennedy Sanders with the rebound. And if you've watched Sanders on the Chaska Hawks broadcast network or elsewhere, those are the kinds of moves she can make. Didn't get the bucket there. But highly mobile with the ball. That's why she's going D1 to Colorado. Hawks on the run again. Anna Lenzen with the finish. Anna Lenzen, one of those supporting figures for the Hawks team. It doesn't always lead in points, but she can make some big plays. 10-6 lead for Chaska. Three ball, corner pocket from the sharpshooter, Marissa Frost. Yeah. 
Centennial, by the way, will get Stillwater next Friday. They'll go on the road after hosting them last December. Lenzen went into a wall. And Macy Littlefield speeds her way down court. She couldn't get free of number 22, Ella Keenan. And everyone playing a little hot potato here. Ten nine, the score. We figured this was going to be a tight game between two high-caliber teams, and it's playing out that way. Centennial, they've come oh so close to winning the state tournament. Got as far as the championship round back in 2009, and Chaska. Won it all for the first time in 2021. A proud moment for Tara Seifert, who has coached this Chaska team for a decade and a half and was beaming about the homegrown aspect. It appears we have a foul discrepancy with 10-10 left in the first half. And we'll use this opportunity to give thanks to North Metro TV for syndicating this game. And North Metro, of course, covers Centennial, Spring Lake Park, and Blaine. Anytime those three meet in the Northwest Suburban Conference, they're always referred to as the Cat Clash. And if you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, we'd like to let you know that we have Plenty of games coming your way throughout the season. We'll be at Centennial on Tuesday for their match with Lakeville North. That's why the Panthers are here. They're going to see both teams and a miscommunication on the passing route. That will be a turnover assessed to Josie Lukoski. Walsh and, Walsh and McCall going in. I'm amazed at the number of substitutions we're seeing in the opening minutes, but again, these two did not play in any event yesterday, so this is their first glimpse. Both teams did get a first look. They competed in the Shot Clock Classic event hosted by the Breakdown, a summer exhibition get-together. But a, that was little more than a glorified scrimmage. There were no seedings or records on the line there. Five on the shot clock. Centennial didn't recognize it. And a foul is called. As you know, this event using a shot clock. And next year, that will be commonplace throughout the state of Minnesota. A 35-second clock. On the left wing, Addy Schneider for Chaska. Less than 10 on the shot clock. Lenzen recognizes it. Tries to spin her way in. Can't get the finish. Ella Keenan staying with it. She played a supporting role on the Stars Bravich team. This past spring and summer, she played a big supporting role on that possession with a second chance bucket. Jordan Metz along the right corner. Lost it to Chaska. They're on the run again. Loose ball. Chaska comes up with it, lends in for three. That did everything but go in. And Ella Keenan will shoot two. Littlefield assessed with the foul.
Ella Keenan considers herself a good rebounder and a defender of multiple positions, but she blanks at the line. Anna Lenzen chases down the rebound. Aubrey Heyer, three off the heel. Marissa Frost collects the rebound. Tough break there for the Hawks. They still have a 12-9 lead, though, with 7.48 to go in the first half. A tough fadeaway move by K.J. Tharp goes in. And that's her first bucket. Kennedy Sanders considered a player with one of the best court vision. Highly visionary, we've seen that all throughout the years on a Lenzen. Got a case of happy feet there. But for Kennedy Sanders, her vision, her decision making, whether you see it in Chaska or on those Fury AAU teams, she was a joy to watch. Emma Walsh with a joyous triple, and that gives Centennial a 14-12 lead. Three ball, nothing doing for Schulke. Walsh to McCall. Eyeing up a three potentially, instead will swing it out. Walsh fires away. In and out, rebound. McCall tipped it to herself. That was close. Frost has it, trying to work around Sanders. That's not easy to do. Kennedy, mobile and tough. She'll pull up. Short on the 14-footer. Centennial. Slowing things down a bit. Five fifty-nine left in the first half. Fourteen to twelve, the score. Centennial over Chaska. Flow a little choppy between the two, but again, this is game one. Sanders sees a lane and converts. Another example of that brilliant court vision of hers. She gets the rebound, finds Schulke in transition. McCall swats it away. And again, Autumn McCall really stepping up her confidence during the second half of her freshman year. In AAU, she played well with the Fury. Figures to be a centerpiece for Centennial. Nice skip, but unable to convert was Kylie Silas. Anna Lenzen takes the ball away from McCall. She's got numbers. Bounce feed not clean, but Silas makes an excellent recovery. The turnaround hook makes it 16-14 in favor of Chaska. Foul on Silas. Katie Anderson to the line for two. Not only is this a high caliber meeting, this could also influence state tournament seating should both teams make the field. Anderson to the line for two. Her favorite food is mashed potatoes and gravy. And she's also a member of the National Honor Society. But mashed potatoes and gravy, Thanksgiving must be one of her favorite holidays then, as mashed potatoes is one of the traditional courses. Yeah. 
Anderson makes both free throws. We're tied at 16. Not a high scoring game, but I think some of that is just everyone getting settled in. You know, Centennial brought back a lot from last year, but they also lost a reliable presence in Camille Cummings to graduation. Chaska had a couple of college commits. One of them, Valerie Heyer, winning back-to-back -back Freshman of the Week awards in the Big Ten Conference. And for Gophers fans, the hope is if they can stick around that group of four, Heyer, Holloway, Battle, and Braun, you've got Kennedy Click on the way. They could do something special. Tough drive for the Cougars. It's picked up by number 10. She finds Schulke for another fast break play. That was Alexis Shaper with the assist. Three on the way, bullseye. Jordan Metz gets on the board. Sanders, drive and kick. She's executed that move more than once. Tasco will reset with 11 on the shot clock. The skip to Aubrey Heyer. You've seen that connection with Kennedy and Mallory. Now you see it with Kennedy and Aubrey. Aubrey taking Mallory's old number at Chaska. And what a great career Mallory had. Centennial with the answer, bullseye. Emma Walsh with the tray. Marissa Frost with the dime. Centennial with four triples, flexing that three-point range. We talked about Marissa Frost and her sniping skills from the perimeter. Schulke, touch three, short. And the rebound collected by a sprinting Frost. She accelerates to the basket. Didn't have a great angle, though. Schneider was able to cut it off. Aubrey Heyer, Jaska with a quick swing. Three ball, corner pocket. Ella Keenan with the first triple of the new season. And this back and forth swing continues. Chaska leads 24-22. 2.15 left in the first half. Walsh. Sanders collects the rebound. Let's see what she does here. Season opening, can't flip it in. I think Metz was able to disrupt it at the last moment. Drive and kick, Walsh goes baseline, draws the foul. And they'll give her the shooting motion. And Sanders picks up her second foul. We'll see if Chaska keeps her on the floor or gives her a breather here. Emma Walsh. When she's not taking up basketball, part of the NHS and a bleacher captain. Walsh the 5'9 senior. Blanks at the line. Jump ball, Centennial with the arrow. And Kennedy Sanders will go out. Seifert not wanting to risk a third foul before the half. Frost for three, yes! Off the inbound, Frost makes it 25-24. Not a lot of fouls, only three for either side. Ashley Schulke says right back at you, off the dribble. But a relatively clean game, so it's a little ironic that Sanders already has two fouls when there haven't been a whole lot of whistles 
in that regard. Lukowski collects the rebound there. Finds Schulke for another three. And that bounces out. Less than a minute to go. Frost pulls up. Rebound Schulke. Centennial, they got the timeout call in. So they'll hang on to it. 38 seconds left, 25 on the shot clock. As we noted, Centennial, one of the featured stories this year in the breakdown book, giving a synopsis of last year's journey. A young and gifted squad. The Stapletons among the Division I recruits to come through in recent years. Taylor McCauley, Jenna Geyer, Claire Orth, Maybe not the biggest of household names, but that youth and savvy came together at the right time to give them a state tournament run. And had they not struggled from three against St. Michael Abraville, maybe they could have gone a little deeper, but the Cougars, a regular presence when it comes to the Class 4A state tournament. Going to the semis last year, and reaching the quarterfinals, or I should say 21, and then making it back at 22. They've had a total of nine state tournament appearances. And Marissa Frost, as we said, set the single season school record in three point field goal percentage at 47 and a half. Speaking of Frost, a major catalyst in the turnaround. A tight-knit group among the senior class. And you've got the junior in Frost, the sophomore in McCall. Jamie Sobolek said if they can stay together and stay healthy, they can compete at a high level. They should be the favorites in their section again. They're in Section 7, historically one of the weaker groups. Centennial was moved there last season and then I remember we all thought well you can punch their ticket right now shot clock did reset by the way loose ball Mets long two doesn't drop another battle for the rebound won by McCall and another offensive board Mets again Banks in the runner Three chances, and a second chance bucket to show for it. Time running out, Tasca won't get a shot off. And perhaps it's fitting that the first half ends in a draw, 27-27. We've seen plenty of ebb and flow from both sides. This is a potential state tournament preview. Not a whole lot on the line in terms of conference or section, but state tournament seeding could come into play should these two make the final eight. We'll take a break. I gotta keep my voice intact and we'll bring you the second half to see who comes out on top. You're watching the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tip off at Hamlin University. Centennial and Chaska tied at 27. Twin City Sports Broadcasting and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James, she's in trouble. Finds James, toss shot, it goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh, oh, I don't know, that put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching. I do remember the 21st night in September, but we are past September and almost on December. I can also tell you that we are tied at 27 at the half. Centennial and Chaska, Ray Lynn is rocking to a little earth, wind, and fire. 
And all you need is some water, and then you'll have all the elements to make Captain Planet. Okay, I'll show myself out. Before I do, I'll let you know that Marissa Frost leads the Cougars with eight points, and on Chaska's end, Ashley Schulke has nine. It was a back and forth first half, real tight. A little choppiness early in the first half. But that seemed to settle down. Again, these are two high caliber teams. Chaska in the tougher section. And Centennial certainly in position to make a return trip to the state tournament. A few notes we wanted to share about the players. Anna Lenzen going to University of Mary. She has a twin brother who is 25 minutes older than her, and her hobbies include reading, archery, and watching movies. Now, you don't see that often. Twins that far apart, usually it's two or three minutes, maybe shorter than that, but Anna Lenzen, she'll play Division II basketball at Mary. Right now, she's focused on getting Chaska the win. Back to action in our final half of the final game in our opening weekend coverage. There is Anna Lenzen converting the feed from Kennedy Sanders, her second field goal. And the University of Mary commit gives Chaska the lead once more. Sanders on the run, tough angle, and she makes it work. Two quick buckets for the Hawks. Centennial wants the three, and it almost goes in. Foul on the Cougars. Kennedy Sanders, the only player with two fouls. Both teams only had three in the first half. So I don't think foul trouble is going to be that much of an issue. Sanders lost the dribble, and it's picked up by Frost. A battle of Fury point guards. Dribble drive for Macy Littlefield gets her on the board. That's her first bucket of the 22-23 season. Sanders inside to Silas, now out to Aubrey Heyer. Three from the key is long. Frost, thought about it, backs off. Anna Lenzen swoops in for the steal, but then dribbles it off her foot. We've got a pile up in the lane, jump ball. Centennial with the arrow. That could have gotten ugly. Back to action. Three ball, corner pocket. Marissa Frost. That is her third triple. On the other end, Anna Lenzen misfires on the long two. McCall with the rebound. Centennial with the 32-31 lead. Littlefield able to save it. Centennial will keep possession. Walsh. Back to Littlefield. Eight on the shot clock. Littlefield's three. Bounces in. And that is the largest lead for the Cougars at any point in this game. Lenzen 
strung it to Silas. Now Centennial overshoots the outlet pass, and Chaska will get the ball back. And Chaska normally doesn't participate in the opening weekend festivities, at least not in my memory. Centennial, as we noted, a longtime participant at this event. Jamie Zobelik joked that usually it was Central and Hopkins in yesteryear when this event was a four-team playoff. Over the years, it expanded to a full two-day event. Or I should say two days full of basketball. Turn around, comes up short for Ella Keenan. Littlefield works around her coverage, but Alexis Schaefer stayed on top of her. Keenan on the run. McCall with the rejection. Little field will check out for now, and again, no real foul trouble for anybody. Katie Anderson goes in. Ella Keenan with the turnaround move. Schulke with the setup. Keenan with seven off the bench. Walsh got bumped by higher. Thirteen thirty-eight. Reset, and we'll try again. Another preview of. What's to come at the high school level? Of course, all of our college commits will become quickly accustomed to playing with a shot clock. McCall on Schulke. She'll shoot two. McCall, average seven and a half points, 6.8 rebounds per game. She speaks fluent Spanish, and she's on track to minor by the end of her high school career. Also involved in the Centennial High School Choir. So McCall taking some college rep courses, it appears. She splits at the line, Centennial five of eight, Chaska two of four. Three-point game. Good cut by Schaefer. Schulke playing a little facilitator now. We're used to seeing those kinds of passes out of Sanders, but Schulke doing an excellent job as well in that facilitator role. Dead ball to Centennial. They'll have 10 on the shot clock. And Lakoski will spell higher. Eight to shoot. McCall, does she recognize it? Sees the clock. Tries to go in. Kick out. Mets for three. Bullseye. Good way to use up all that time on the shot clock. Kennedy Sanders unable to finish on the acceleration move. Mets, the kick out, another three. Long. 
Chaska with numbers. Schulke flips it in. Lakoski with the assist, but Centennial spots an opening on the other end. Ella Keenan gets back in time to say no way. 39-37, a tight one here. I don't think either side is led by more than four. Kennedy Sanders steals the inbound pass. And it bounced off a Centennial player's foot, or at least deflected off of one, so that is a kick ball. Otherwise, I think she would have found Keenan for fast break play. Schulke found Keenan, layup is short. Marissa Frost, anytime she lines up a three, there's a sense of anticipation. Here's Sanders, struggled a little bit offensively. We're used to seeing her put up some bigger numbers. Jaska with a second chance, and Schulke drops the corner tray. And this is where having talent surrounding someone like Sanders can help. Ashley Schulke. Now Metz responds on the other end. Metz up to 11. She has three triples now. Back and forth this game goes. 42-40, Cougars over Hawks. Keenan on McCall, Autumn blocks it and was able to get it off of Chaska to keep possession. And even without Heyer and Carmen, you still have three college commits confirmed on the Chaska roster. A couple of D2s and a Pac-12 D1. Whoa, Frost. That would have been a highlight-worthy play had that gone in. Made something out of nothing, potentially, but Centennial still gets another chance. And now Kennedy Sanders gets the rebound. Silas couldn't handle it. She'll kick it back out. Kennedy Sanders. Drains the three. Her first triple of the new season. She's up to nine. And again, Kennedy can influence the game through passing and scoring. She's proficient at both. Free throws coming for Macy Littlefield. Schaefer with the first personal foul. Littlefield, another soccer basketball crossover. And a bleacher captain at Centennial. Centennial going a bit deeper into the rotation. Aspen Gray. Enters the game, Centennial blanks again. They've struggled at the free throw line in the second half. Kennedy Sanders. Centennial picks up the foul. Sanders to Schulke. Touch play is good. Sixteen for Schulke. Yeah. 
Elbow jumper for the Cougars, does not bounce in. And another foul on the Cougars in the loose ball scenario. Chaska trying to hold on to a three-point margin and pick up a signature win to open the new season. Entry feed for Keenan, rims out. Less than nine minutes to go. Metz with the half-court skip to Aspen Gray. And Aspen gets her first bucket of the new year. Centennial gets the stop, Metz made a good play there. Cougars in trouble, they gotta get it across the timeline. They do, and with the shot clock, it's easier for officials to recognize that 10 second limit because they don't have to do any math. They can just look at the shot clock. Littlefield, three ball, comes up short. Schulke zips it down court, and Schaefer. Couldn't put it in. Collision and a blocking foul. It's on Kennedy Sanders, that's her third. So again, not a lot of fouls between the two sides, but Kennedy Sanders in a bit of trouble here. 8.04 to go, still an eternity in basketball time. KJ Tharp, high dribble there and ends up walking. One point game. Schulke to Keenan. Centennial zoning up, it appears. Chaska's got shooters, though, so we'll see how this plays out. There's one of them. And it almost went in. We've had a lot of those almost. Well, Centennial does get the stop as Walsh fought away for the rebound. Ooh, close call there for Anderson. But she resets. Finds a cutting, Littlefield. And that was no little feat. Centennial takes the lead again, 46-45. Chaska calls timeout, I think they have their full complement. They have three now by my count. It's a tight one. This could be a photo finish with 6.56 to go. We talked about Centennial's history. Let's not forget about Chaska. It goes well beyond that state tournament championship in 2021. Chaska, of course, Courtney Boylan, now a realtor. She was Miss Basketball back in 2008. Mallory Heyer, who's doing big things for the Gophers now. Even with the COVID shortened season, she finished as the all-time leader in points and rebounds for Chaska, and she was an accomplished volleyball player as well. Chaska went 23 and four, only lost one game in conference, but got that upset loss in the section semis but plenty of talent to come through Chaska. We don't get to see them a lot in our coverage. They're down in the southwest corner of the state, but you can watch all their home games on CHBN, and they've had plenty of memorable moments in that time. So an impressive mark for the Hawks. 
and they hope to pick up another 21 season. Again, their section figures to be a tough one. The Metro West got a little bit smaller this year with Cooper and Kennedy moving over to the Tri-Metro, so that opens up non-conference options for the Hawks and Centennial in the Northwest Suburban Conference. Maple Grove, Rogers, figure to be in the mix. But Centennial with that favorable section assignment. We'll see if that changes next year with the reclassification. They've fluctuated between five and seven. Chaska staying in two. Kennedy Sanders, steep three, no good. And that section alignment has allowed Chaska to build several big rivalries outside the conference. Eden Prairie is one of them. And again, they'll get Lakeville North at the tip-off classic. That's always a lot of fun. Another big kickoff event in the early part of the season. Katie Anderson weaves around her defender for the layup. Lenzen on the left wing. Sanders not giving up on those threes. Comes up long again. Big chance for the Cougars here with less than six minutes to go. Gray, pump fake. Walsh for three. Bullseye. Walsh with three trays. Largest lead of the game for the Cougars. Plenty of time though, especially with the shot clock in play. Chaska looking for a triple of their own. They can't get it. Katie Anderson sends it to Frost, who will direct traffic. Walsh lends an honor, looking for help, and throws it away. Katie Anderson went one direction. Walsh thought she was going another way. And the Hawks get a break. Now again, because of the shot clock, Centennial can't just sit on the ball in this game. Autumn McCall, she's made a few plays down low and got the block off of Chaska, so Centennial takes over. Now Chaska brings the press full court and Anna Lenzen will shoot two. Anna Lenzen, the University of Mary commit. Also played varsity volleyball. And if she is a proficient archer, I, I kind of wonder she likes watching movies. I wonder if the Hunger Games trilogy played a role in that archery hobby of hers. I'll have to ask her. Splits at the line. Both teams with two fouls left to give. As we work our way to the closing stages, Frost finds Walsh. And she draws the blocking foul. They will give Walsh the shooting motion. The foul's on Schulke, and now the action is getting a little more intense in this second half. The second on Schulke. Remember, Kennedy Sanders is three. Walsh at the line. Neither team, though, has done too well at the line, both shooting around 50%. Now, this is only game one for those two, but I presume both Tara Seifert and Jamie Sobolik will address that at their next practice. You never know when free throws can come in handy. An empty possession for the Cougars. That opens things up for the Hawks, and now Kennedy Sanders will go to the line. It's been a difficult night for Kennedy, but she's going to get the bulk of attention, at least in the early point of the season. She also plays lacrosse. 
and is an animal and pasta lover. Makes me wonder which kind of pasta is her favorite. Well, if she ever gets to pay a visit to St. Paul, I know of a good spot with pasta. That would be Cassetta's. She makes both free throws. Doesn't have one specific role model. She takes elements from any player she can see. And now a push foul on Chaska. That's their last to give. So it's a one possession game, but the Hawks out of fouls to give for the rest of this game. And even though Centennial has struggled at the line, that's not a guarantee it will continue. Deflected, so McCall can pick it up, but she's doubled and draws the foul. Now who's it on? It's on Sanders, that's her fourth. And you're at the stage of the game, 4.30, where you may not want to risk putting her on the bench in a tight game, so Kennedy's going to have to apply her cleverness, and she has a lot of it right now. McCall at the line for two, or one and one. And another empty possession. The Cougars have missed five straight free throws. Schulke to tie it up. Almost went in. The three-pointers, they're finding the mark. Some of them are just bouncing out. Well, ball goes that way sometimes. Now again, Centennial can't sit on the ball here with the shot clock. Something you might consider without one. But with this being a shot clock invitational, they've got to work it. It gives them an opportunity to run the clock, find a good shot, get that cushion. Emma Walsh took a hard hit. Chaska with numbers here, and they make the most of it. Aubrey Heyer on the turnaround. Sanders with the steal. Schulke with the layup. Chaska retakes the lead. Kennedy Sanders never, ever, ever quits. And that is why she is considered among the best in court vision. How did you develop that sense of knowing where to put the ball? Kennedy Sanders said time. It helps you learn where to put the ball and when. You get it by practicing, by playing games. And over the years, Kennedy believes her court vision, her confidence has progressed and that is hard to argue when you see what she has done. Remember, she was a key varsity player going back to her eighth grade days. And what does that ability do? It sets them up for shots, teammates that is, and allows them to make a move inside. Scrimmaging and making sure her head is up when she's pushing the ball. So Kennedy really doesn't have a super secret, if you will, she just relies on the old adage of time and experience. Kennedy Sanders, it's been a lot of fun to see her play over the years. She is a solid lacrosse player too. And what more can you say? Tara Seifert commends her high basketball IQ. By the way, Tara Seifert I didn't learn this until recently. She was a Division I recruit herself at Iowa State. Got tutelage from Bill Fennelly. McCall. Fakes it. One point lead for Chaska. Littlefield comes up short. What a fun game of strategy and swings both teams well aware of the ebb and flow that comes with basketball. Kennedy Sanders uses her pivot foot to scoop it in. She's up to 14, like we said. That motor keeps plugging and going no matter what the situation is. An entertaining ending to opening weekend. We figured that might happen Marissa Frost not ready to go away quietly. She drains the runner, and it's back to a one-point margin. 
Frost up to 13. Sanders, Schulke, higher. Lenzen. Chaska with a series of quick skips. Frost got a piece of it. Centennial with the arrow. 2.28 to go. Ooh, inbound pass, not in cleanly. McCall, that did not cross the timeline, so she was able to go back and retrieve it. The ball did not cross the timeline. By the time McCall got there, she'll have a chance at free throws. Lenzen tagged with the foul. Now McCall went empty in the last possession and has struggled a bit over the last couple of years. One and one. Another empty possession. I think I know what Jamie Sobolek is going to work on in the next practice session. Centennial 5 of 14 from the line. And now they're starting to add up here to one point game. Meanwhile, Littlefield gets hit with a foul. Higher thinks, Higher thought it was a shooting motion. Officials say sideline, and I agree with them. But the Cougars out of fouls to give now. And for what it's worth, Chaska, five of eight. Better percentage than five of 14. Lenzen, thought about it. They swing it to Sanders, three from the wing. That could have been big, but Lenzen is there. She'll shoot two. My, oh my. It's the first game for these two, but it has the drama and the tension of a playoff matchup. Lenzen knocks down the front end. She's at six points. Once again, going to University of Mary. A longtime figure on both Chaska and the Fury squads. She may not be the superstar athlete, but she gives Chaska a three-point lead. Now Centennial, once again, facing inbound pressure. Frost under duress. Centennial can reset. One possession game, a three would tie it. Lenzen lunges forward for the swipe and will go to the line. One and one here for Anna Lenzen. She made both free throws in her last trip. She's got seven points. And if Chaska hangs on, free throws are gonna be, play a big part. The Hawks making them, the Cougars struggling to locate them. A split at the line, four point game, but it's a two possession lead now. Walsh to Littlefield. Higher, almost got the poke. McCall threads it, Tharp. We'll shoot two. Schaefer tagged with it. KJ Tharp has not been to the line yet by my count. KJ. She goes by that name because it's easier than her given name, Kirsten. And she gets one of two. Centennial calls timeout. One possession game, 113. Now here's where the shot clock comes into effect because Jaska now can't lay back and let the clock run out. They're gonna have to run a set here, but a big opportunity for them to maybe take that 
set and turn it into a silencer. A reminder that if you're watching this on the TSB Television YouTube channel, we'll have a lot more coverage coming your way. Tuesday, we go to Centennial for their game against Lakeville North, and then we'll have a few more games in December. January, we've got a couple more invitationals. The Hall of Fame Classic, which we hope will be played in its entirety for the first time. And one of my favorites, the Minnesota Fury MLK Classic. Chaska scheduled to compete in that event. They'll take on Champlin Park. One of five games on the schedule. Holy Family Catholic will play Austin. They made it to state last year. Visitation. They've got Sam Wills. Eden Prairie making a return. A lot of fun. A good way to celebrate MLK Day. Basketball. A big presence here in the state of Minnesota. So that's what's on tap. But we've got a photo finish, 57-54. Ashley Schulke leading the way with 18 points for the Hawks. Kennedy Sanders with 14. Anna Lenson is bumped, and I don't think that's the player you wanted to foul. Because Lenson has made a few freebies. And that is it for Littlefield, she is out. Littlefield leaves the game with seven points. One and one here for Lenzen. And it's a two possession game again. Free throws aren't the prettiest way to score, but they can get the job done, and that is what Lenzen is doing. Knocks down both. Lenzen, six of eight over these last few trips. Centennial gets the outlet pass in. Does Metz have enough speed? She does! And the foul on Lakoski. No, oh, I take that back. Schaefer, I didn't see the zero from the official. But Jordan Metz with a huge momentum play for Centennial. And the three-point play to boot. That makes it a two-point game. A minute to go, Chaska cannot hold on to the ball here with the shot clock. But they can drop a dagger. Walsh read the pass. On the run. Come up, comes up short. Sanders. She misses, and now Centennial gets one more chance. A two to tie, a three for the lead. How will Centennial play this? Frost drives, kicks, Walsh for three. Lenzen. Coming up with some clutch plays in the final minutes. Free throws, a rebound, and now a chance to ice the game. Walsh had a good look for three, just didn't go in. It brings shades of the Anoka visitation game I called yesterday, where Sam Wills had a couple of looks that were within her skill set, they just didn't go in. And I'll say this again, just because a shot doesn't go in doesn't make it a bad play. Anna Lenzen. Misses the second. Centennial collects it, but they're running out of time. Centennial calls timeout. They will have 8.3 seconds. Now, who do you go to? Lakeville North, they're rocking along to some old school hops. <laughs> Everyone having a little fun with this. Oh, they're having some fun with the Centennial student managers up there. This is a friendly sport, a big community here. As I was gonna say, option A for Centennial is probably gonna be Marissa Frost. But if she can't put it in, 
Jordan Metz. She has three triples. Emma Walsh with three. But again, Frost, I think, is option A. Walsh and Metz are available. I have no idea how this will turn out, but Centennial will get one more crack to force overtime or who knows, maybe even get a four-point play. I've seen that a couple of times in my 16 years of high school coverage. Glad to be with you for another season. We've seen many great names through the years. Centennial, Chaska, all the way down the line. Now Centennial has to go the length of the floor. You cannot advance the ball. They have 8.3 seconds. Who's it gonna be? Walsh. Bounces off her foot. And Centennial uses their final timeout, but they lost some time when Wash bobbled it. 1.3 seconds. Not much time. They're going to have a time for a pass and a shot. I don't think he'll have enough time for a dribble. I remember back in 2015, Maya Moore just needed 1.7 seconds to hit a game-winning triple in Game 3 of the WNBA Finals, a triple that proved valuable as the Lynx won it in five. Who will come up with the heroics here for the Cougars? That bobble by Walsh. A bit costly because it eats up a little time. So it's going to come down to the final possession. We had a feeling this would be close. There was a reason my fellow riders came over here to Hamlin to watch this game. Chaska Centennial. What an ending. If Chaska hangs on, the free throw shooting will be a big part in it. But Centennial can tie it. That's it. They will have to get the pass in cleanly, and the Cougars out of timeouts now. Anna Lenzen makes one more stand, and Chaska hangs on for a 60 57 win. Anna Lenzen, can you say clutch? She came up big late. Kennedy Sanders with 14, Ashley Schulke with 18. Jordan Metz, 14 off the bench for the Cougars. Marissa Frost with 13. Needless to say, I think these two learned a lot about themselves tonight. 